Praise the Lord, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. These are the traditional words of greeting which proclaim with joy and excitement this central truth of our faith. On a morning long ago, three women, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, went to the tomb where Jesus had been placed. They were in despair. They were there to care for the body of their beloved Jesus. The only thing on their mind was how would they get that huge stone out of the way? They expected to find death. What these women found was not death, but instead they found an empty tomb and they received the unbelievably astonishing news. He's been raised up. He's here no longer. He is risen. And then the messenger told them to tell the disciples that Jesus will be found in Galilee. My beloved sisters and brothers, we proclaim the reality that because of Jesus' resurrection, the empty tomb is a symbol of hope. The image of the empty tomb inspires and impels us. It's the image which is central to our faith. This is the hope of the world. The tomb is empty. When hope is rare, the empty tomb proclaims life is possible. Death, discouragement, despair does not have the last word. We need to share this good news that Jesus lives. Jesus brings hope to a world torn by strife and turmoil, cynicism and suspicion, disease and death. In the midst of problems and circumstances for what there, which there seems to be no way forward, in the midst of issues around which the differences seem unbridgeable, especially in these times, our encounter with Jesus, the living Christ, offers a third way, the third way of Jesus, and hope breaks forth. This is the promise of our faith. My hope for you is that you will shout this news from the mountaintops, from the valleys, across the back fence, to the office next to you, as your children play sports in the marketplace. May this good news be reflected in your life and in the life of your church. Praise the Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed.